Real quick, I just want to say thanks to everybody that's watching that subscribe. I really do appreciate it. I'm Fox. This is Check It Out. All y'all that's watching, as always, welcome to the channel. You officially a hood figure. You do your boy a favor, like and subscribe right now, man. I need you to do that, man. The Check video's out. finna start. Here we go. This movie starts with a grown man as a fetus. We're at an abortion clinic. Maybe because the abortion of the themes and ideas that establish baby boys are necessary for the maturation of manhood. In the black community, perhaps, we need to do away with this method of creating baby boys in order to see our man evolve. Check it out. This movie came out in 2001, a year before I graduated high school. It was both Taraji and Tyrese Gibson's first movie, a film from the perspective that most outside the black experience know little about. Baby Boy is a real and real look into the lives of young men who recklessly father babies, lack drive, and or live off their moms. As he did with Boys in the Hood 10 years earlier, John Singleton delivered to us Baby Boy, giving society a pass, but not mentioning the prevailing conditions that contributed to the rise of such youth. Instead, choosing to hold a mirror up to his own community to examine, expose, and hopefully exile these teachings that perpetuate these flaws. Check it out. So what's it about and what's a baby boy? It's about the arrested development of black men and how that impact affects our women, our mothers, and our communities. This film explores the conditions that allow baby boys to flourish while presenting alternatives to challenge and correct the symptoms that contribute to these flaws in our manhood. In the end, we witness how being a baby boy hinders manhood. Now what's a baby boy? According to Dr. Francis Cress Wesley, it's usually a young man that feels powerless from a society that allows him little room to grow. Or simply put, it's an over-nurtured male that hasn't been allowed to fail on his own. This over-nurturing is usually done by a matriarchal figure to protect that young black male from what seems like an abundant onslaught from, let's say, systematic conditions controlled by white supremacy. Or gangs, drugs, and the police, and the police, and the police. However, this has an adverse effect of weakening masculinity, producing grown-ass men with juvenile mindsets. Check it out. Tyrese Gibson as Joseph Jody Summers is our baby boy. He's 20 years old, living as the man of his mama's house since his older brother was killed. He's a father of two by separate women without any goals or ambition. He's just day-to-day -day with it ignorant of self-reliance or of the hints that his mother gives him that he should leave the well, nest. As Nas would say, homie living in his second childhood. Sweet Pea, Jody's homie, serves as contrast. If Jody shows us the uselessness of a baby boy, what Sweet Pea shows us is the rage and aggression they feel. However, Sweet Pea is fed up with life as a baby boy and is willing to do anything to reset and begin anew. If Jody is Peter Pan, for lack of a better title, Sweet Pea is a lost boy, all pun intended. Yvette, Yvette is Jody's first baby mama and girlfriend. She loves a man, but damn near despises him. She's always tired from work or what seems like taking care of two children even though she only has one. She does her best to try to tolerate a cheating, sad, hustling Jody. What she wants is a family, but what she has is two baby boys. Snoop is Rodney, Yvette's ex-boyfriend. We know for sure he's a baby boy that lived up to the facade of thug life. He's the distinctively stupid type of baby boy. So low that he would rape. The type that's committed to crime. What's interesting about him is, the way Jody describes Henry, his mother's ex, is exactly how Rodney comes off. Juanita, Jody's 36 year old mother, was 14 when she got pregnant with her, old, with her first son and 16 when she had Jody. She inadvertently made Jody into a baby boy out of fear of losing another child. What I loved about her was her ability to love through all her hurt. Almost perfectly balanced, she was strong yet submissive. The passion felt between her and Melvin is like real life relationship goals right there. That's the couple we should be imitating, not Jody and Yvette. Melvin is Juanita's ex-con boyfriend. He's the antithesis, 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 antithesis of Jody, a testosterone driven baby boy that quickly grew up and out of those childish ways. Men like Melvin more than likely probably contributed to the fears some mothers had of losing their children. Still, at the end of the day, he checked off the most boxes that make up a real man. The linchpin of Jody's and Melvin relationship is the concern Jody has of Melvin replacing him. You heard the phrase, there's only one king to every castle. 
Shouts out to Monique. Juanita's best but friend shows us the average size of most of our mothers. Kim is Sweet Pea's girlfriend. Sweet Pea's girlfriend is a cool chick that got her man living off her and her mama. Although she's down with it, her mama probably don't think it's cool. Peanut is the mother of Jody's daughter, his second baby mama. She wasn't too down for baby and Jody. In fact, she only wanted to use Jody for what he was good for. Which was, you know, Miss Heron is Miss Heron is Peanut's mother. She's the second youngest grandmother in the film. And lastly, it's this chick named Pandora who pops up. She's a vet's co-worker and is a straight thirst trap. Homie, avoid those thirst traps. Check it out. What I see when I watch this is how much love our females have for us. How much patience they have. How they feel when they're enduring. You can feel the film's vibe is not angry or righteous, but rather dramatic and caring. Even though the film omitted the culpability that many females have in creating baby boys and society's role in the infantilism of them. This film could have been an indictment on how being raised within a racially institutionalized nation that perpetuates to be a man you have to be a criminal. But no, instead, I don't know if you noticed, but it wasn't any white people in this movie. And I think I get it. Maybe John Singleton is respectfully calling out black people without placing the guilt on white people. I think Jody is iconic in hood cinema because he represents black youths during the early 2000s. When you see it, consider while watching how if we romanticize baby boys, we get Peter Pan. And while you got me talking, while it's negated in our communities, Peter Pan syndrome really sounds like what Jody is dealing with. Sweet Pea, Jody, Rodney, Melvin, they're all versions of what it is to be baby boys, but with different experiences and outcomes from growth and development. Check it out. How to know if you're a baby boy. You believe criminal activity is a rite of passage. You borrow and beg women for money. You get jealous of your mom's love interests. You stray away from responsibility. Real men intimidate you. Don't leave the room in the presence of men. Stand tall, homie. You're selfish and you're a user. You do the least and you want the most. You can't fight your own fight. You're always asking somebody to jump somebody. Or you're always trying to get somebody jumped. You seen how Jody got punked by them shorties? Didn't swing one time, but had the nerve to raise his hand to a vet. You believe in perpetuate hood tropes such as being a baby daddy instead of being a father, being a killer instead of a worker, or you're simply into making illicit money. You don't look out often, but when you do, you make sure everybody know. Notice, Melvin got some money, got his woman a TV. Don't nobody know that? What Jody do? He got a little bit of money, put some rims on the car, made sure everybody know he got some fly clothes and sh**. The thinking here is just different. People have to remind you to support yourself. Remember, baby boys are anti-self-reliant and they feel entitled. Check it out. When you see it, to truly understand baby boy, you can't forget Juanita. Jody Moms was only 16 when she had Jody. She was a single parent with help from her mother raising two boys. I imagine doing the best that she could. Suddenly, she loses her oldest, then her mother passes. So now she's all alone trying to protect what she has left which is Jody, her baby boy, who at 15 or 16 fathers a son with the vet who was only 19 or 20. So when you think about that much, it explains a lot of their behaviors. Lil Jojo was only like five or six, so that means the vet was basically a freshman in college smashing a freshman in high school. <laughs> but let's get back to this theory. What if after losing so many black males in our community, women started nurturing boys in our communities in ways that would limit our entry into adulthood, you know? as a way or in hopes of preserving black boys. I mean, I believe it was these conditions that created a vacuum of masculinity that birthed these beta baby boys. I mean, the very idea of a grown man becoming a baby boy is problematic because even at your highest, you're still a boy. You feel me? I would submit for your consideration that deep down inside, most baby boys resent themselves. The mere enabling emasculation of their existence would drive anyone insane or to logically want to change, which is most likely why Melvin changed, Jody want to change, Sweet Pea don't know how to change, and we see Rodney committed. Ladies, I would recommend you say yourself the pains that would occur from dealing with a baby boy. I view it with caution them showing Yvette playing solitary to show how lonely she is. From what we know, it's that environment that produced Jody. A lonely pessimistic female whose child's father is absent contributing to the cycle that manifests baby boys and that's why I say get you a mutual fund 
Low key, this movie also showed you how, if allowed, another man disciplining your children can have positive effects. Juanita siding with Melvin, I know, rubbed a lot of females wrong. But what do you think? To me, it was Melvin's accountability that gave him credibility. Something that Jody continued to struggle with. Consider how she not. It only would have further enabled Jody's coming of age. And it would have put a wedge between her and Melvin. She desperately needed the support of Melvin in order for her to proceed in forcing Jody out the nest. True indeed, Jody bogus for putting his mama through it, making her relive the past trauma of pushing her son out only to perish in the world prematurely. Yeah, he was bogus for that, even doubling down on it. The boy foul. Check it out. Lessons from Baby Boy. You know we black folks are. The barter system. Has something to trade such as services or goods that are valuable. Buyers and sellers. Everybody's one unless you're saving. Guns and butter. In microeconomics, this is an example of how nations have to choose between two options when it comes to spending finite resources. It may either buy guns to invest in defense, or it may choose to buy butter to invest in the production of goods. So in short, you should be buying things that increase your worth, and then buying the necessary things to protect that worth. But you know what? Don't even worry about all that. Everybody Lesson. Don't let any man, let alone a baby boy, use, use all your love. You Leave some love to love yourself and You're your so children. Using you all your love on anybody has potential to make you, you better. Instead, get you a 20-year mutual fund. Lesson. Ladies, I know you think your girlfriends care about your relationships, but they don't. It may feel good to vent, but the problems caused by a baby boy are yours and yours alone. Lesson. Black men are unnecessarily killing themselves two ways. One, by fulfilling the goals of predicted program, as baby boys in these streets. And two, by evading responsibility through abortions. Lesson. Baby boys violate, grown men demonstrate. Jordy was tough disrespecting Melvin until he got hemmed up. It wasn't until Sweepy was whooping that youngin that he hit Jordy how disrespectful he was being towards Melvin. Check it out. So let's wrap this up. Don't let this movie be the motivation to stay in a relationship with a baby boy or with an insecure woman. If you walk away with nothing else from this film, know that everyone needs to grow up and move along at some point. Some would wonder, did Jody grow up or did he just switch the role of his mother from his mom's to his vet? And to that I would say, he progressed. Juanita, his mother, wanted him not only to grow up and move out, but also begin to prioritize his life and to be more responsible. And it appears he did. He went from being overprotective of his mother to welcoming assistance, from aborting responsibilities to optimizing opportunities. In the end, we witnessed the potential for Jordan to be the counter for the conditions that create baby boys by being present and accountable. Check it out, I got a little extra. Would Jody have ended up with Peanut, his other baby mama, had she babied him like a vet did? And what about Peanut and Jody's child? They daughter, I guess you can't save them all, right? I don't know. Was Pox present ominous to anyone else in this film? Y'all remember when Tyrese was a VJ on MTV? Or how about that 94 Coke commercial that he did? That was his debut. John Singleton was the bootleg CD tape man. 5150 was there. Freeze Love was the Bean Pie Muslim guy. Jody getting that Alize was another shout out to Tupac. That mix with a little bit of Chris Down, Thug Passion. Hey yo, here go a fun drinking game for this movie. Take a shot every time somebody get hit in the face. I never seen it until now, someone hitting you so hard your mama feel it. I'm Fox, this is Check It Out. Like, share, subscribe, so the big homie can survive, man. I appreciate all you hood figures for doing what you do, watching the video all the way through. Oh yeah, I got that Patreon set up, make sure you rock with that for me and everything. Yo, let me know what movie you want me to do next, man. Show your boy some love, man. Leave a comment, man. This here started as a hobby. Seems like it's something y'all want more of. As long as y'all like it, I'm going to keep doing it. I'm out. Take care of yourself. Mask up, homie. I did that. I did some... Oh, what is all this shit on the ground? All on my blouse. <laughs> People gonna think I'm on my period. <laughs> okay, that's a wrap. Look at my clothes. <laughs> Wardrobe!